Hello and welcome to CodeBlaze and in this uh, video series uh, that I'm starting right now I'll be going over through my project color dash so mainly I'll be going over through the code explaining what I did and why I did and some of the things that I learned along the way and few things that I could have done better so it's kind of an overview sharing my experience developing my first game that I actually published and what all I learned along the way and what I think could have been done better and the mistakes I made. So it's just something like if it's helpful for you like uh, listening to what I did and you can leave a like down below and I'll go through over some of my code so you could get some ideas also. So the first things first that's false color dash so if you haven't seen my previous video where I played the game. So it's a simple uh, infinite endless runner kind of thing and it's a platformer Let's mute the audio and yeah the first thing you get is an error but that's something else uh -huh. so the thing the main idea is you need to just match the color of the cube that is touching the surface so if you match that your score increases and your speed also stays like you can go ahead and if you touch something that's other than your color, your speed decreases and once you get out of the screen, you will be like, your player dies. So it's a simple idea. And the only thing is the platforms are procedurally placed and the speed also increases gradually over time. So that's it. And the thing is when you get behind, you have an option to continue uh, after watching an ad. So you can either press continue or restart and if you press continue the ad will play and that only works on Android and iOS platform. So yeah, this is a mobile game and it has simple touch controls. So the if you touch on the controls, I'll get to it. So the next thing that I want to cover is like what all plugins I'm using and the Unity packages that I'll be using here. So let's go over the plugins. So if you look at the plugins folders, there are three plugins only, uh, UniRx and Zenjit. Those are some free plugins for Unity. UniRx basically adds Rx, uh, Reactive Stream support to Unity, which uh, makes it like, it, basically it's full of utility classes that can help you manage uh, asynchronous streams. Zenjit is a dependency injection framework for Unity. Now, uh, I'm going to be honest, like Zenjit is probably overkill for such a small project, but the main idea for this project was for me to learn UniRx and Zenjet. Like I wanted to experience Zenjet because there are many discussions out there like whether you should use Zenjet with Unity or not. But I thought let's just experience it and see like what are the good points for it and what, what are the bad points. So in the upcoming videos when I'll go over Zenjet in more detail, I'll tell you what I feel about it. And the other is a CodeBlaze uh, plugin. So this is a custom plugin. Like it's just a code utility library that I've started developing while developing this game. So I thought some of the things that could be abstracted and could be reused in my future projects, I started moving the stuff in this library. And I have also put this library on GitHub, so it's free to use for anyone. It's basically like my own library that will help me. So that's the things. And other than that, the Unity packages that I'm using are, first of all, you got advertisement, that's for the monetization. So the camera control is done using Cinemachine. Then you have, this project is a URP project, which is using the new 2D render. So that also gave me some problems, like I wanted to add particle effects, but the new VFX graph doesn't work in the 2D render. I don't know why. So I just gave up on particle effects. Other than that, uh, I tried using the device simulator, but the device simulator doesn't work with the new input manager, which I'm using for the input. So I wasn't a, like, if I choose the simulator thing and if I tap the screen, the input manager input is not being read. I guess they both aren't working with each other. Other than that, uh, I have remote config I tried, but then I gave up. Then shader graphs there. So the... There is only one shader that I created <laughs> and much in much with shader graph and then you have text mesh pro, um, unity UI, URP and that other stuff that's there. So with that out of the way, let's dive into Rider and see the code structure. 
So as you can see, uh, the other thing I tried using for the system was those assembly definitions that you can put in Unity. Uh, they reduce compile times and like you can split your project nicely in multiple assemblies and it's really helpful because then Unity will only rebuild those assemblies that have been changed. So like the two custom assemblies are right, that I have here is the code blaze and the color dash. So the color dash is your assembly C sharp, like the main assembly of the game that will be loaded. And this references all these other assemblies. So that just helps it in some ways. So if we can, if we look in the structure of the plugin and the assets. So the more I'll focus on color dash only, the plugin I'll have a separate video which will go over what all is there in the plugin that you can use. And in this would in this first episode, I want to concentrate over the input stuff and how I am handling inputs. So, as I told you before, I'm using the new input map, like the new input system. So if I just open the input map, yeah. So I have the left tap and right tap set to space and numpad zero. This is for me debugging in the editor, so I can use my keyboard. Other than that, I have this touch control. So the like I tried to find stuff on the new input and touch controls, but I didn't get much. So what I did this I had this primary touch tab. So this will basically fire an event when anytime the screen is touched, and then I check the position of where the screen is touched, and according to that I decide whether it's the right tap or the left tap. So if we go into the input system. So input actions.cs is the CS, uh, program file that is generated by the your input action map, whatever you create in the UI. And then I have this input system. Okay, so here I'm also using your UniRx. So the event stream that comes from the input action, I convert that to a UniRx stream. Now, if you don't have an idea about Rx, it's basically you create streams and you can apply operations on streams and you can listen to the streams so what happens here is uh, if i see the setup touch controls okay so i create an observable from an event so from event is basically any c sharp event that can be fired okay and i add the handler okay so by default if you are using the uh, basic touch uh, like basic input map you also uh, put handlers to the performed uh, event that it provides so basically uh, this from event will give you a handler that you can subscribe to these uh, touch inputs that are performed okay so I create this observable from event next I op apply an operator from rx so what operators do in rx is you can like if you have a stream of data that's flowing like this okay and then if you have a stream of data that's going then you can suppose uh, apply an operator where Okay, so anything that's coming from here will go through where and only the stuff that satisfy the condition of where will pass ahead. So if we have an event that is X and an event that is Y and only Y satisfies the condition. So only the uh, event Y will pass ahead. So here I'm checking whether it's um, in the left tap or the right tap. And another thing I'm checking is whether the game is in the playing state. So this game state is another thing that is managed on a higher level. So it's basically a boolean because uh, when we start the game, there's a menu screen that time I don't want to detect these touches. So I just check that thing and then uh, I check the touch screen, the primary touch, the position and the X position of that. And I basically divide it by the screen with whether it's greater than or less than. So this right tap and left tap observables are created here in the setup touch controls which is again called depending upon the platform the game is running using some preprocessor and this is called in the constructor now you can see this is injected using zenjet so once i go over zenjet i'll be going over how this input system is then consumed in the player class but that's all for the input system um, i have the dispose i disposable also here so that I clear my subscriptions when the object is destroyed and basically two set of methods either for touch or uh, keyboard depending upon which platform is running 
and the signal bus and the injection those all comes from zenject which i'll be going over in the future video so if you like this kind of content and if you like to see more as i go over my code and explain stuff why i did so please do leave a like and subscribe down below and the last thing that i want to say about this kind of input handling is like it works perfectly on my desktop and in the editor but on the actual device it is kind of sluggish like i don't know whether it's a problem with the input maps and the touch handling how that works if because input map is a preview package and the touch handling may not be perfect or it may be a delay caused due to this unirx also so that is one thing that i experienced while doing this and i may change this but for now this is how i implemented it so that's one question you can have again like doing this like subs changing their event to a observable like it is kind of redundant but the main purpose here was to learn the unirx library and get a feel of how it works so not the most perfect implementation there are problems with it the major one is like it's sluggish on there's a delay when i play it on my devices and that is the main thing that i learned like i didn't test enough on my devices or with other people and that did create some problems in the future that i'll go over so thank you please do leave a rating and if you have any other suggestions or if you have suggestions on how this code can be improved do leave them down below so this is a two way process like you learn something from me i learn something from you and subscribe for more content thank you bye